No, that's why I cleaned it's it the other day. Working. Mm -hmm. it. Oh, we're so we're done this week. Yeah. All right, everyone. <laughs> Dear friends. Welcome, everybody. Hello. <laughs> so um usually susan pops on so we'll see when she gets here but um nah so she's a sure thing she's she, she'll be here or she won't be here but we always love her here yeah all right and then i'll go ahead i'll pull up so let's uh let's do a check in how was everybody's week this week good yep cool April. Really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. good. All right. Awesome. It was good for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um uh, uh I want to do I want to talk about the broccoli incident. The broccoli incident. <laughs> broccoli incident. So as you guys know, we're also yeah. It's it's, it's uh oh. Oh. Oh, and Ashley Schaefer entered the waiting room, but that's not Ashley Schaefer. Nothing, that's nothing's on. <laughs> no, that's Susan. Oh my God! It's saying Ashley uh, Schaefer. I wonder if people were trying to come on and it was saying Ashley Schaefer. Oh well, technology. Right. These kids. <laughs> we use. You know what? I wonder if it's because I used that link that you just put in Facebook. That's so weird, you know? right? Yeah, I'm fixing it. No, it, 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 it uh, I mean, they're, I they're here. That's the main thing. No, I know, but we know their names. Uh, but <laughs> we'll talk about troubleshooting later. Anyway, back to broccoli. So, um, I was really committed to trying to make it's not an expression, <laughs> there's really a broccoli story to cover. Back to making the broccoli. So, um, so I know these things seem like little things, right? That we, you know, connect with here and there, but they're good demonstrations. So of kind of real love techniques. So I was committed to being right about broccoli being too much, too much broccoli in our freezer, guys. We got, okay? we got in on the garden. Here. Here. <laughs> I do too. But Way too much. Is it because of Tom? <laughs> it, it's because I'm afraid of not having anything green to eat, and he's a real anti-veggie person. And but I don't seem to eat it. Like it's just these bags from Costco in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's because it's gross. It kind of <laughs> gets old after a while. Yeah. yeah. So so I I decided I was going to uh, be right in my rightness. And I was, I was putting the groceries away and the broccoli away. And I was pulling out all these bags of broccoli to reorganize the freezer. And I'm like, oh, I'm swimming in broccoli. And then, cause I don't like broccoli. So I, I was like, come here. I gave, I gave him that, come here, come with me so I can show you my rightness finger. Right. And so then I uh, showed him the broccoli here. Look at all this broccoli. And so I was attacking him. I know it's not like a big attack, you know, or a scary, hairy attack, but I was really wanting to be right. And I was really wanting him to see me in my brightness. Brightness. And I was getting ready for a food fight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so what he did, though, is he goes, he goes, yeah, look at all that broccoli. <laughs> I was That's amazing. I love that broccoli's in there. That's such a good bro I love that. Oh my God. I can I, look at all this broccoli I'm going to be able to eat. And I'm like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you bus. got me. You got me. Because how can I look at a face that's so in love with broccoli and be like, you can't have it? <laughs> Sucker really helped me. It has nothing to do with broccoli anyway. I was emptied out from going to Costco and I needed to make myself right so I could get a little power hit so that he would see me in it. And instead, what he did was he just made me love him more and broccoli, weirdly, weirdly enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, and, and it wasn't passive aggressive. I was no, a, no, no. He was, was really in a, in a joyful I state. Was a good place that day of love with yeah. broccoli. Yeah, yeah. So I and was, me. And and there wasn't any negative thing that came up from that. You, we no. we, we we organized the ice box and yeah. and then we came together, kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, and now I want to buy him some more broccoli because now it's all cleaned out. Win win. <laughs> the ice now there's room for ice cream. That is <laughs> your coffee. Wasn't it yeah, ice? That's right. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and to your credit, broccoli does take up a lot of room. Oh my God. <laughs> it takes up so much room. Okay. My, my girls are like, yes. Mm -hmm. They they agree with my rightness. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, but it's really me, you know. Like it gives me security to know it's in there, you know. Thank you. Run out of anything green, you know. And I just noticed it's getting whiteness on it, you know. Yeah. The freezer, so probably not. freezer burn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kill my mind and corrupt my vision. Where I'm getting my safety from broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> That's an ACIM thing. Right? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Feel my mind correct my vision it's where I believe that we're not to have as much broccoli. It's a cruciferous vegetable. Oh, it's, it's so great for digestion. Oh, oh. just amazing. All oh. I can think of is that Saturday Night Live skit when the guy's writing the song. Who was it? Yeah. It's Spade when he's like, make it broccoli. Like he's making it a <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, about broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> she chopping broccoli. That's it. <laughs> The chopping, the chopping, the chopping. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. She's still connecting to audio. Um, so let's let's start, shall we? <laughs> no, I wasn't the only attacking one this week. Thank you. Oh, yay! Did you want to share? No. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was like, I like was literally like yelling at the top of my lungs, which I do every once in a while. Yeah. Okay, got to clear that vocal cords. At what? The other day when <laughs> Matthew pushed away from me without telling me where he was going and it triggered my abandonment. <laughs> I chased him down. <laughs> I was not leaving. I know, but I made up a story. I mean, he just pushed into the bedroom. It's not like he pushed outside to drive away. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes we just want our we just want our people where we want our people. <laughs> sometimes we forget we're safe always and in always, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. I want that mm -hmm. chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream flavored love, which is him. Yes. I want vanilla flavored love, which is someone else I could call. We <laughs> want the special, the Matthew special. <laughs> With All right. That's on top. Cool. Uh, does anybody else want to share anything or you feel like we can just get started? Any with other confessions that priest Kira and Todd can hear? Any other uh, vegetable incidents? <laughs> Thank you for that. Any Thank successes? You, anyway. Any vegetable successes? <laughs> Any successes from the book or things that you noticed that you feel like sharing? You don't have to. Okay. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. Ready to go. Evelyn looks like she's still connected to the audio. I'm just gonna. You're um, sure she's a sweet dog. Or can I, I can really do there. Hopefully Every she can. Day is success with otherwise, you. otherwise, Evelyn, you can pop out and try back coming back in if you need to. Um, if she can even hear that, but she might not be able to. All right. Sometimes they can hear you before you can hear them. When they're yeah, talking. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Well, I love sharing that little love moment with you guys. You're my favorites. There we go. Okay, so can you guys see the screen? Yay, okay. All right, so we're moving right to what we do without enough love, real or imitation, getting and protecting behaviors. Okay, so this is gonna go into, I think the big five. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Insufficient real love creates an emptiness we cannot ignore. 
especially when we also don't have enough imitation love to make us feel better temporarily. Our subsequent behavior is often determined by our need to be loved and our fear of not being loved. Without real love, we do whatever it takes, getting behaviors to fill our sense of emptiness and imitation love. To eliminate our fear, we use protecting behaviors. The getting behaviors include lying, attacking, acting like a victim, and running. The protecting behaviors include lying, attacking, acting like a victim, and clinging. Lying. We use lying as a protecting behavior when we make excuses, shade the truth, or do anything else to avoid the disapproval of others. We don't lie because we're bad. We lie because we've learned from countless experience that it works. People rarely do disapprove of us less. People really do. People really do disapprove of us less when we hide the truth about our flaws. And we'll do almost anything to keep from feeling that withdrawal of acceptance. We use lying as a getting behavior when we do anything to get other people to like us. When we tell people about our accomplishments, but not our flaws, communicate positive feelings that are not true, change our physical appearance to attract people to us, or tell people what they want to hear so they'll like us. We don't think of these behaviors as lying, but they are. Because we don't tell other people, we're manipulating them. We lie so often that we don't even realize we're doing it most of the time. If you watch two people in conversation, for example, you'll usually see that each of them is carefully and unconsciously studying the other for any hint of disapproval or a forehead wrinkling into a frown, an eyebrow lifting into an expression of doubt, a change in tone of voice. And when that happens, the speaker immediately modifies what he or she is saying until those signs of disapproval disappear. Again, although we do this unconsciously, it's still lying because we don't tell people we're trying to get them to like us. From the time we we're, were young, we were told by our parents and others, put your best foot forward. It sounds like good advice, but the results are usually undesirable as illustrated by Mark and Susan's dating experiences long before they married. When they went out on their first date, they were both nervous about being accepted. So they put their best foot forward. Susan prepared for hours, makeup, hair, clothing to look good so Mark would like her. Mark, too, made himself as physically attractive as possible. In addition, they were each careful to talk in a way that they thought would be pleasing to the other. As they each put their best foot forward, they succeeded in winning each other's acceptance. But now they'd started on a path that often has disastrous consequences. When I show you, only my best foot, and you indicate that you like me, I clearly hear that you like me because of my best foot. Then that's almost invariably exactly what you mean. When people tell us why they like us, they're also telling us that if we didn't have those characteristics, they almost certainly would not like us as they do. When someone tells you that he or she likes your best foot, there's a strong implication that you must hide the rest of you from that person so you won't lose his or her affection and attention. But we still love to hear people say, I like you because we're just dying to hear what comes next because you're witty, intelligent, handsome, beautiful, strong, responsible, whatever. It's understandable that Susan was delighted to see Mark's good natured <laughs> good-natured, sensitive, and loving side. We want our partners to have the positive qualities that would make a relationship enjoyable. Susan was also trying to buy his approval with her best foot. That approach really does seem to work in the beginning. Mark and Susan were both thrilled to find someone who made them happy, but then they discovered what we all do, that our patterns have more than just a best foot. Our partners. Our, par our pa pattern. partners have more than just the best foot. There's that other foot and a lot more besides. Uh, he doesn't smell nearly as sweet after a long day at work as he did on the first date, nor is he as entertaining or accommodating. 
Uh, her hair and smile don't have quite the same glow after a rough night's sleep. Neither partner is quite as eager to please the other as he or she was in the beginning. We don't intend to deceive each other early in a relationship. We are willing to do it because we're so anxious to be accepted. <clears throat> a serious problem then arises if our lives succeed in gaining the acceptance we want because our partner will eventually discover the rest of us. After Mark and Susan were married, they began to see the qualities they didn't notice while they were dating, and they were disappointed. <clears throat> we often complain that after we get married, our partners change. You may think, he's just not the person I dated. Yes, actually he is, but you didn't see him clearly in the beginning. After you got married, however, you saw more of him, not just the parts he wanted to show you. Can you take over? <laughs> All right, then. Not just the parts he wanted. Whoa, Whoops. got a dog. Not just the parts he wanted to show you, which are also the parts that you wanted to see. Our partners do change in some ways. They become less willing, for example, to work hard to earn the imitation love we gave them initially because the exchange becomes less rewarding than it once was. When we lie to a spouse to, or, uh, or potential spouse, however unconscious it may be, we establish a foundation that cannot support a healthy and happy relationship. In the following chapters, we'll discuss how we can change that. Whew. That was a lot of truth. <laughs> so much truth. I think lying, I have a couple of comments. Okay. I read the whole section. Oh, good. Perfect. Um, I think lying gets a, it doesn't get enough attention, you know? Uh, yeah. like it's one of the more underrated behaviors, mm -hmm. you know? But I think it's, I think it's because it's so permissive. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, yeah, you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to put your best foot forward. You're supposed I mean, to. I know that people pleasers have an especially difficult time with lying. Um, I also know that myself as a recovering perfectionist, um, that was my form of lying, trying to be perfect or trying to be whatever. Uh, putting the, the best foot forward, whatever best foot forward looks like to you, whatever form it takes is is the uh, is the lying behavior, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just the trading like he said in the beginning of the book, just put into a more specific form. You know, we're, we try to be our best because so that they'll like us. And um, because maybe we think not being our absolute best isn't good enough or isn't lovable, Yeah, uh, which is the case for perfectionism. Um, or if I show or, you my flaw. Or feeling unworthy, if you want to keep it even more but generalized, just feeling unworthy. Yeah. Uh, or feeling un for just feeling unlovable. Keep it in real love terms. Uh, just feeling unlovable at some mm -hmm. level. Um, so so I think it's so permissive to 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 lie, especially, you know, keeping up appearances. I mean, that's that's lying behavior. Um, putting the best, best before, like you said. Um, and it's fun. It can be fun in the beginning. But then as the relationship goes and then the wax comes off the apple whatever you call it, the sheen. <laughs> the the petals come off the, the flower. Petals come off the flower. <laughs> then you get to see what you, you know. What you really bought. What you buy. What your returns are on that. <laughs> yeah. You you, you, you know, everybody's playing, everybody's rolling the dice with their partner until they really get to know that. I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's like every partner, no matter what kind of trading is going on in the beginning, you know, six months or a year or more later, it's, Yahtzee, you know, you just don't know. <laughs> it's true. So yeah, until those behaviors go away, or sorry, until the best foot forward stuff goes away, that the behaviors start to come out, and then you get to see where they're really where what people are really wired for um, right. when they're not trying to be something, you know. You know, ever since I started doing real life stuff, like whenever I would meet, you know, sometimes oh, okay, not in every situation, but in situations I really did feel very safe was like, um, I would tell like a group of people or people that I meet, I'm like, <clears throat> well, I, I, I do have this thing where people would say like, you know, clients and stuff, they would be like, oh, I'm going to be your friend. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Let me tell you why. <laughs> you know, I'm an introvert. I'm quiet. I don't like to do anything. Probably won't call you back. I'm not, I'm not good friend material. Um, I want to really. from you is what they meant. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, maybe. I mean, there has been those boundary yeah, like, things back in the way, way early stages. Clients? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, so, so anyway, but, but I, I tend to tell people, I'm like, nope, this is, this is why you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> and, you know, like, here's my strengths and here's my weaknesses, because what I've noticed is one thing I know me very well, and I, I don't want anybody to be disillusioned, you know, when they come into my experience and they're like, whoo, <laughs> what is that all about? Well, the fact of the matter is, I, th I think a really great way to sum that up is uh, even if people are trying their best to um, be authentic and honest about building a real friendship, mm -hmm. they still are going to come from a place of inevitable trading at some level. And as a coach, you are you, you don't do those things, uh, mm -hmm. so, so so to speak. You don't do a lot of those things, which which may I think the, the word used was disillusion. It may be it may be disillusioning to people. It's like, why isn't this person trading back with me? I'm just trying to be friends with her. Well, yeah. it's because she's playing in a different level and she's she's learned things that you maybe haven't learned yet. And so you don't you you might think her her not trading is self love and her not trading is being full and her not trading is healthy things. Um, but a person who is unassuming won't know that, and they'll think that it has something to do with them. Yeah. or it's their fault, or it's your fault, you know, for not trading with them. Um, but I think, you know, people, most people, so in other words, uh, pe most people don't know these things until they learn them. Yeah, you know? true. So, Sorry to interrupt. no, it's fine. So the, I guess the lying one is, I've always been relatively honest uh, and upfront about me because I've never felt normal, you know, and I don't know if it's that INFJ thing. Um, but uh, Myers-Briggs stuff, you guys know what that is, but um, just kind of being a bit off, you know, from kind of how everybody else thinks and, and what they, um, what they, how they perceive the world is just a little bit different. And so <clears throat> um, I, I tend to be pretty upfront because I don't want to feel the pain of losing friendships or relationships because the other part of my personality is really good at melding. So I can be anything to anyone. It's actually one of those jokes that, you know, somebody was put out there. It said, said INFJ, you're hiring me for a job. Well, you just tell me what to do and I'll be that, <laughs> you know, kind of thing because we can do it. But uh, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be happy. So in relationships, though, I mean, we were both INFJ. So I don't think there was a whole lot of lying behaviors in ours. But I have certainly done it not, not, to not. just meld in with uh, in a relationship in the past. Has anybody else done that? You guys ever done that? Just lied. try to lie, liars to meld, <laughs> lie to meld, lying to feel accepted. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like even if it's just by being quiet, right? Mm -hmm. Like someone's like, "I hate this idea or this group of people or." all these people are going to this place because of their spiritual beliefs or whatever, and not just be quiet instead of saying, yeah, no, I don't align with that or, you know, not a match. Yeah. yeah. I tend to, I tend to just jump out of the pot. Yeah. Like I just run away. <laughs> Matthew, see, Matthew has a really good question though. Yeah. He, he said this and, and I was like, okay, wait, we'll ask them to talk about it. He was like, why is it lying if you get dolled up? And I, and my thought was, well, it's about your intention, right? But you guys, I wonder if you want to speak, because I remember first reading what lying is according to Dr. Greg Baer, and it doesn't fit the world definition of lying at all. Like it's a whole different way of looking at it. I, I agree that intentionality has a lot to do with it, really. I mean, I, I, getting dressed up to go out because you love doing that. Versus you're getting right. dressed up to go out because you think your partner's going to be embarrassed of you or not like you or and do it more for society than for well for yeah. them yeah. not I was, for you. I pride myself not being a liar, so I was a liar. And my my whole life's in shambles now. <laughs> my whole life's in shambles now. I'm <laughs> very kind I do not lie. So I'm no, laying down. Well, it would be modifying ourselves to please another. Right. Um, to get get attention. You know, yeah. I mean, I feel like we have a lot of lying behaviors in some of the quick and ready and fast and furious uh, TikTok ish type stuff, you know, that social media type stuff. It's all about lying behaviors, getting attention and 
things like that. And so we can see that and we can see that it could be emptying. We, we see that it empties people out. And how do we see that? By these social media people committing suicide. That's how we see that they're getting emptied out, you know, or that, I mean, I, I saw a post from a guy who's very popular and he was like, I don't even know what to do with myself right now. I'm seriously depressed. I have all these followers, but I have essentially no real love, you know, and, and he's just, he's just crashing and crashing because his intention was to get attention, (laughs) you know, and to them hoping or believing that's going to cause them to feel loved, but it really doesn't. It's like eating white rice. You're like starving two minutes later. It's not the thing, right? That can sustain. Yeah. That's it. It's not sustainable. Attention is imitation love. Just doing it for the sake of it. Right. Praise. Yeah. Praise. Praise. Safety. Yeah. Because if I look good for you, then maybe, um, you won't yell at me in public or you won't. Yeah. There's, a, there's so much to that, to that one. I think it is, it's really juicy. And for me, the way that I saw the impact of lying in my life, in addition to a million other ways was because I got sick because like Todd said, I was a perfectionist and a people pleaser. So that meant never having any wants or needs, never saying no until finally my body said no. I was like, no, here's third degree, here's uh, stage three cancer. So you can start saying no and stop lying your ass off to try to make everyone like you. It, g- it gives you permission <laughs> True that. Yeah. To, to stop lying behaviors. I mean, it, it's right. unfortunate. We have to, some of us have to get to that point where it's like, well, everything has fallen apart. So, and I want to mm-hmm. emphasize, I want to emphasize that the, you know, all events are neutral. It's, it's really not to say that, you know, we don't want to be dogmatic and say, this is good. This is bad. You know, it's how we're using it. If, if something, if if getting dressed up fills us up with appreciation and enjoyment, it's a good thing, you know? Um, But if it's something that if it's, if it's, you know, based out of love, I guess you could say, Um, but if, but if we're doing it right, but if we're doing it, because we're fearing disapproval or fearing not being good enough for other people or that we have to really look pretty. Otherwise we're afraid of what we'll look like. People actually see us without makeup on. That's a, those are two different things, two very different things, love or fear, but, but really it's, you know, dressing up the appearance. Right. So, so what is the lie really, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and, and if, for those of you who are listening, who are like, I don't care about appearance. I don't, I don't put any of my, that's not the thing it could be white lies it could be it could be be lying your family it could be calling someone on their birthday that you don't like helping your friend move (laughs) i got a list (laughs) oh yeah the long long list so the list of lying behaviors is is immense you know it's it's doing something what did you say matthew white lies yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, if I do it, does it fill me up yeah. or does it take empty me, me out? out? Right. You know, does it empty me out? The, the feeling is a, important. Is it filling me up or is it emptying me out to do it? That's a very important point about the, the self-honesty factor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can't just be a rule. Like, that's I don't call people on your birthday, you know, or or do call people on their birthdays. It can't be one or the other. It has to be, does it feel good to me today to do it? Or does it feel like emptying me out today to do it? And it can change every day because you're 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 guided by your own self differently every day, you know. I want to bring this up because this is actually really important, especially when it comes to couple them. Um, is that if Todd or me, one of us doesn't want to do something. We, 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 it doesn't feel right. We don't feel alignment. It doesn't feel like that's the right thing to do. And the other person is like, yeah, but I want you to do it. You know, or you should be doing it. How come you're not doing it for me? <laughs> Can we do that that much? Never, okay. <laughs> never. Because back, back in the day, I had tons of expectations that he show up or do something with me or take me somewhere or do whatever. 
you know, because I'm like, that's what couples do. That's what good yeah. couples, that's what healthy couples do. You know, they take care of each other's family obligations. Mm-hmm. They, you know, do all that stuff and they, they show up. And what I found was in, in the past, yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't happen now, uh, was that if I, you know, was committed to making him do something, he would do it, mm-hmm. but he would be miserable. And he, and you could tell because he doesn't hide his emotions. Like, you know, he doesn't go into lying behaviors like that, you know? So it was, it was um, unhealthy. It was unhealthy for him. It was unhealthy for me. And so it was like, well, let's stop doing that. And then once we stopped doing that, that was pretty empowering because then it was like, I only do wonderful, fun things with. You know, it really is. Uh, to your point, it really is important and freeing and uh, to to vet each of these things yourselves as a couple when they come up, you know. Yeah. Do we really want to do this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is this in I highest and best good to do it? Is it yeah. okay that I go do it and you don't? Can we yeah. be secure in like, that? That's a good one. You know, let's be secure in that. You know, I like like the movie. These are small examples like the movies. Um, I wanted to go see a movie. He was like, no, I'm really in the flow with working. And I was like, well, I feel drawn to go to this movie. I didn't go, well, now you have to come to this movie with me because I'm not going to, I'm not allowed somehow to sit in a movie theater by myself. I was like, peace. I went to the movies (laughs) and I saw it. It was really good. It was Oppenheimer. Anyway, so. um, And I want to see that movie too. Yeah, so I want to see it again. But I was was in the zone with my work. I wanted to continue that. Right. So if I just. she gave me that freedom mm -hmm. to. Have your choice. To have my choice. Mm -hmm. And and I felt appreciated for that loving act of of you giving me that choice. Yeah, so we, we need, we, it is so vital to a loving relationship to just let each other have our choices really bottom line there to yeah. your point that was i think that was such an important thing that you just said about todd would do it but he'd be miserable and so not only when we force a lie force our partner to lie by having expectations or we not that we can actually force but you know what i mean or when we lie so it doesn't just empty us out when we lie and do something we don't want to do for our partner we start to resent them So then it creates more separation because now I'm empty and I'm blaming him for my emptiness, even though I could have still said no. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Other thing that we can remember is that it's going to boomerang. You think you're loving them by lying your ass off and in the end, you can't stand them anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So eloquently stated. Beautiful. Uh, I was going to comment on that uh, also. And you, you just made that wonderful point. And that is, uh, uh, resentment is a great uh, resentment. Is that the right word? Yeah. Resentment is a really great way to know how you feel that you don't want to do something Yeah. because resentment means you're making a choice that you think you should be doing, but you don't really want to do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't always know that until you make that choice. Right now, mm-hmm. generally we do what we want, but if you're, if you're seething making choices, you're definitely in a lying behavior. And I think, I think, resentment is evidence of a lying behavior happening yeah and it could then lead to other behaviors like attack well it's certainly going to empty you out yeah because there's and then when you're emptied out and you have something happen no matter how slight it feels like an an avalanche and it's like wait a minute you know it's really not i mean this is why this is one little tiny example how miserable people can get in relationships (laughs) so so quickly is if it's nothing more than a collection of must have must must do's or should do's and there is then the unspoken you, you've heard that phrase unspoken resentments that pile up uh, as a result of that or mm-hmm. or even if they're not blaming their partner they just might feel inundated by all the obligations and things that they have to do and have to show up as uh mm-hmm. to, to to feel acceptable in that relationship even if they're not being badgered by their partner it could be more societal or familial expectations right. be they spoken or unspoken there there are so many things that are kind of chaining us down if we don't visit revisit them and and just say hey am i am i living is this is this how i want to live you know yeah is right this, that's know? when you that's when you feel like the petals have fallen off the flower because you know all of it is just accumulated resentments 
or not all of it, of course, you know, but but a, if there's a good portion of it that's accumulated resentments and scorekeeping, then it just comes down to, you know, not feeling great. So just some things to think about there. Uh, let's go back. <laughs> just a couple of things to consider on that. There's so much to say. I, I don't want to go too fast through these behaviors because okay. you can get them intellectually really quick on a quick pass. But I think talk, discussing them a, mi a bit, a minute, especially if we're feeling the draw like we were, helps to put them in perspective and give these real examples about how deeply these behaviors affect us on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, um, and they we may not even because lying is insidious. Uh, lie, you you're yeah. lying a, a, quite a bit without even knowing that you're doing it. You know, at first, and yeah. I think I think a lot of the time. You know, with attacking, it's a little bit more obvious. You're pissed and you're projecting it, right? Yeah. But but lying is is more silent than that. You know, it's the silent behavior. <laughs> silent you behavior. Know, I don't know. Yeah, it's doing things out of alignment. It's you don't well, you don't know when someone's what I mean by silent. You don't know yeah. know when someone's lying to you uh, in a lying behavior. Uh, yeah, they, which they, is different than somebody they, just telling you a bald face lie. Right, right, right. Not a lie, but but if they're putting their best foot forward. You know, and you haven't met them before. You don't know whether or not they're lying, and it and it doesn't matter whether or not they are. You know, the question is, is that behavior going to empty either one of you out if if once it once it goes away because it's a form of um, imitation love. And you know? yeah, and maybe schmoozing, schmoozing. You know, yes, neither one of us like that. But we didn't. Uh, I can say that I don't resent you anymore. <laughs> Well, that's some really great truth telling, Todd. <laughs> that makes me love you more. Does it? Does it? <laughs> a little bit. Well, you don't resent me either. I don't no. know. <laughs> no. Now there's a lot of humor in that. We can we can pull some shit up from the past. We can we can pull it up from the grave. If we had right? if we had to, we could. But we had we did have a lot of resentments that, that <laughs> yeah. were unspoken yeah. until until we got more and more into it. We were like, I I I I remember me saying it's not worth doing this with resentments. It's just yeah. not. We have to we have to talk about them and get them off the table, off the chest and and unspoken resent they let them be spoken resentments for 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 goodness sake, not unspoken. That that's I just stopped. I just said no more with that. And then we started talking about whatever the hell they were and truth telling them. Yeah. Um once we had gotten our real love legs under us okay you don't start with that yeah. um and and got the skeletons out of the closet and um yeah. they don't affect us anymore you know mm -hmm. because we released the need we we uh remanaged our expectations of each other and what was a what was really important what wasn't really important how we may have been miscommunicating but uh, making assumptions uh, as a result of some of those uh, perceived it could have been like perceived resentments and things all kinds of uh things can get healed when you start becoming willing to talk about them and yeah. um and that's the nature of your love you you do truth telling and then uh that person you you have the opportunity to feel loved on that thing when you spoke speak about where you're not feeling loved and resentment is one way of not feeling loved and having an expectation, so to speak, you know, anyway, rabbit hole for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, lying behaviors is, uh, something to have awareness of. And then if we're talking, like, let's say we're trying to face our lying behaviors, I would say, you know, just coming out and saying something like, you know what, if I did that right now, I would be lying. You know, if I did that right now, I would, it, it, it would yeah. empty me out. Yeah. You know, and and being on and we should be allowed to be honest with our partners and not get attacked for it. Now, does that always happen that way? No, it depends on where you are in your relationship and where your partner is and if they're able to hear it. If they're emptied out and you go, you know what, if I go to your family's house, I'm going to be in line behaviors. They might be upset by that, you know, and so that's why it's good to have both partners in many cases to learn about this kind of stuff. But if you kind of know your partner pretty well and know what they can handle, you can always preemptively have a conversation and say, listen, I'm learning this new stuff. You don't have to learn it if you don't want to. I understand. Um, however, 
I might say these kinds of things. And the reason why I'm saying these kinds of things is because I want to learn to love you better and I want to be more loving with you. And so this might come up, just know you don't have to do anything differently. I'm just, I'm just learning and, um, and see if they would be willing to just go, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I spoke last week and this is a, another example of the power of framing things for your partner and just saying what she just said. And that helps to set a non-reactive tone in your partner, you know, and also leading statements like Kira was using, um, I forgot what they were. You just said a couple. Susan knows a bunch. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you're, you didn't do anything wrong. You're not doing anything you're wrong. Not doing you, don't anything wrong. To, you don't have to learn this stuff with me. Yeah. I'm just yeah. doing something right now and I'm learning about it. I'm learning to love you better. You know, right. like sometimes having that result on the ready for them can be really helpful for them to be able to hear you better, you know, because it's like, oh, she's learning to love me better. Okay, hold on a minute. Yeah. I kind of like this idea. Does that mean more sex? <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, Hi. Boom. <laughs> Finally, the ROI. Finally. <laughs> Results when driven. When you're saying you don't <laughs> want to do something, like when you said, Kira, about I'd be lying to go to your families, I love to lead with, I can say I don't want to disappoint you or right. I'm afraid you're going to be hurt or angry or whatever. I like to just have that as kind of the intro to say, and it's a no, right? <laughs> Don't hate me. Yeah. It's a no. And it's a no. It's a solid no but on this. On the other table. side, I can see I don't want to disappoint you. I, I really don't want to hurt your feelings, whatever. I like that one. That one helps me to get the work, to get the no out. But then if I go with that to it, choose the movie without him, I feel bad. I feel bad. Yeah. I feel bad. He feels bad if he goes without me. Oh, <laughs> see, that's... That. That's an interesting one too, you know, just thinking about it from our part, partner's point of view of, well, of, like of how will they feel. You're in the movie by yourself, I would feel bad because I feel like I disappointed you. I know. And I feel so like I disappointed her. You are gonna or she was gonna say something about that though. I think it's no. she's no, that was good to give her more info, but I mean because then he can't be responsible for my happiness, right? I think she has an expectation. Right. He thinks she has. If I am mad. I had an expectation. Yeah, yeah. Probably does not. Right. So, so let me understand the scenario. So she comes to you and the, like, you know, generally <laughs> not necessarily your issues, but um, she comes to you and says, I, I, I don't want to disappoint you, but I don't want to go to this X, Y, Z. And then you say, well, um, I don't want to disappoint you either. You know, and I, and I would feel bad. If you don't come with me, is that what you were saying? Yeah, it's just like you would feel bad if you went. It's, it's just, that... like, just like you and Todd talking about you're going to the movies, Todd's saying doing the work. You know, if I was in Todd's shoes, I would feel bad that you're over there by yourself and I'm home doing my whatever. I see. So yeah. it's guilty, I think. So so yeah, so that yeah. would be a little bit of that guilt uh thing there and so but if she's reassuring you and saying hey it's okay I I really I love this idea I'm in love with this idea this feels so fun and freeing for me to do it you know then if you do have any or if anybody just listening has any kind of residual guilt about she's going off to do her thing and I'm here and I feel like I should be going and doing it with her you don't necessarily have to you can release that guilt especially if they're saying please know that is okay. Now, I know that sometimes we can have a tendency to go, fine, I'll just go by myself then, and then be a little shit about it, right? <laughs> right? I want to blame them for what I, that's not being in, that is being in lying behaviors too, or being an attack actually. Sorry. Attack, yeah. Yeah. And so still, when our partner does that, right, we don't have to change our mind. Nope. They have their tantrum. Yeah, they get their drown, for sure. I, well, if it's I feel bad that you're not going, if that's a controlling behavior, that's one thing. If it's a, they just need reassurance that it's okay that you're doing that thing on your own, that's, that's something else. That's something else. else, yeah. Right. Cool. That was such a good, that was great, Matthew. That was really cool. A hard one to unravel 
if you're accustomed, like Matthew is a really strong provider. So we'll just get into that over the AC. I'm hot and he's cold. And I'm like, well, turn it up. He's like, no, you're hot. I'm like, yeah, but you're cold, right? It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I feel like that that's a thing that people can get into. It's like, let me love you. No, let me love you. Because yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. We're working it out. <laughs> working it out. Working it out. So uh broccoli air conditioning. <laughs> right. Awesome. For those of you just tuning in, you might tuning in, you might want to rewind from the beginning. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can go through the next one here. Um, I feel like that was very good use of our time. Hopefully everybody yeah. else that felt the same way. Oh, yeah. Okay. And hi, hi, Evelyn. You couldn't hear us before. We were saying hi to you. <laughs> we did say hi when you came in. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, practical application scenarios really helps to ground the information. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of these types of different types of things throughout the book as well, uh, where they, he, he gives a lot of practical. Yeah, Greg does. Uh, insights. Um, lying. We use lying as a protecting behavior. So we're on attacking. We, yeah, we just did. Are, we, oh, I don't know if it's different on your book, hon. But are I mean, you doing the section <laughs> header is attacking, right? We just read that one. We just read lying. Oh, I'm so sorry. We I went one. backwards for some really weird. I see that. Attacking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Attack like I didn't I just talk for 45 minutes about lying and I went okay. Attacking. Attacking is any behavior that motivates another person through fear to behave in a way we want. We attack people when we criticize them, physically intimidate them, withdraw our approval, make them feel guilty, and use our positions of authority at work, at home, and elsewhere, all to get imitation love, usually in the form of power and to protect ourselves from fear. With anger, for example, the most common form of attacking, you may be able to make your wife sufficiently uncomfortable or afraid that she'll do whatever you want in order to stop you from making her feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. That was my go-to. <laughs> How could I not approve of you? Oh, man. Your anger, you can get up, uh, whatever. You can get her to give you attention, respect, power, flattery, approval, even sex. But of course, she's giving you these things not because she gen is genuinely concerned for your happiness, but simply to avoid your anger. I've been attacking wrong. <laughs> you I could have been getting a lot more. Getting sex. a lot more than. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, earlier in the chapter, Mark didn't just ask Susan about the ketchup on the wall. He attacked her. Attacking involves disappointment, anger, and shaming, all for the purpose, however unconscious, of motivating others with fear. Let's explore why Mark chose to attack Susan rather than simply ask her a question. Early in their relationship, Susan usually gave Mark what he wanted quickly and willingly, in great part because she, he gave her what she wanted trading. Uh, it was a fair trade. But when the effect of imitation love began to wear off, Susan responded less quickly and willingly to Mark's desires. Didn't want to trade anymore. If he increased his positive attentions toward her, she was more responsive. But the ever-increasing level of attention that Susan unknowingly required of him became inconvenient, even exhausting for Mark. He began to experiment with ways he could get what he wanted more reliably and with less effort. From past experience, Mark had learned the motivational benefits of anger. As a child, he hurried to avoid his parents' displeasure when they were angry. So he eventually learned to apply this motivating force to others. That is so key right there. We learn how what works. We learn what works when we're kids. Whether it's lying behavior, attacking, acting like a victim, we learn what works, either watching someone doing it, and we watch that they got the thing that they needed to get from doing it. So we got the mirror neurons piece going on, even if we're the ones being attacked as kids, because um, abuse begets abuse, right? Mm -hmm. So like when we're, uh, ha when we have that, what do we call that? Um, um, example, then we will mimic it. Uh, let's see. In the schoolyard, he noticed that he could persuade his peers to do what he wanted 
when he raised his voice and physically intimidated them. And in business, he discovered that when he became irritated, fellow employees would often hurry to do what he wanted in order to make him happy and thereby stop his anger. Not very good leadership there. Having learned the power of anger, Mark increasingly used it to motivate Susan. And that's what he was doing when he said to her, what's that mess on the wall? Although he was not consciously aware of his intentions, he nonetheless hoped that if he spoke in anger, she would more likely and more quickly respond by giving him what he wanted, attention, respect, a clean wall, and so on. Earlier in their relationship, Susan had become afraid whenever Mark attacked her, and she did whatever it took to make him happy. But eventually, she realized that pleasing him was exhausting and ultimately futile. So she began to protect herself from his anger with the protective behavior she had also learned as a child, her own anger. All her life, she'd felt the painful emptiness and fear that result from a lack of love, real love. In that condition, Mark's attack was more than she could bear. So when he attacked her about the ketchup, she attacked him in return. You want to be useful for once? Why don't you clean it up? To protect herself, himself, Mark then responded with another attack. Had he stayed in the room, they would have continued to attack each other, adding more wounds to their relationship. Although anger can be an effective way to protect yourself, and to manipulate others to do what you want, you need to consider these questions. Have you ever been angry at your spouse and at the time felt more loving toward him or her or more loved or enjoyed your relationship more deeply? Of course not. And yet we continue to get angry at our partners. Shortly, we'll talk more about why we do that. And in subsequent chapters, we'll discuss how to eliminate anger from our lives and our marriages. I didn't, I didn't even realize how much I attacked and controlled um, until I left home. Um, I mean, I, mean, I, I kind of had an idea, but I saw it really when I left the fishbowl, you know, and I got to I got to interact with people in a completely different new state and, and all that stuff. And I could see that I was doing some of the same things that Mark would do, um, and that is you know, um, whatever being, you know, the, 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 the comments, the questions, the pauses, you know, shit like that, you know, <laughs> criticism, that, the, which is criticism, for criticism sure, was, for sure. Was, criticism. And, and, and just criticism was a major problem for me. Um, cause I had been heavily criticized growing up as were you. So I played into your mom programming just beautifully. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, we did that very well, um, to trigger you feeling blamed and, Mm -hmm. and me, yeah. Per cycle of, what do they call it? Cycle of abuse. Um, yeah. Cycle of shame, I guess. Cycle of shame, cycle of abuse. Yeah. Well, so yeah, my dad would use anger and, and, um, as a form of control, as a form of control Mm -hmm. and attack. And so that was a big thing and criticism. Yeah. So, so regardless, I mean, he didn't teach me those things. He just modeled them. Yeah. And so those became my coping mechanisms for when I was upset, Mm -hmm. unproductive coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they were more or less unavoidable because I hadn't been exposed to anything else. And that's what it's like when you grow up in a household, you model the behavior of the someone who's your, whoever the guardian is, the predominant one. And you'll pick up things from both parents too. You know, from mom, I picked up clinging, um, uh, which is very shameful uh or used to be and then dad i had picked up um predominantly the anger control um you know control and attack and that kind of thing so yeah so i could i could use control to get what i wanted a lot of times from Mm -hmm. people and um and clinging if i felt insecure Yeah. And if I was melding at the moment, then I would just be like, oh, I'm accepting every bit of that criticism. And that is so me. And I am, I'm the wrong one. I'm doing it wrong. Or if I was more like in our example of the Susan character, um, I would attack back, criticize back. Oh, well, you think I don't do that? Well, guess what you don't do, you know? And then it would be just this cycle. 
and it would and then you get on the field of rushing that, and then you have an argument <laughs> and then the argument comes yeah so <laughs> anger uh, yeah Go ahead, Susan. I just was going to say, one of the ones that I think is so overlooked, like if you say you're attacking, I feel like people think that's like yelling or criticizing or whatever, but yeah. in there, that part withdraw approval, that was oh. huge. Like every night I'd say, good night, dad, I love you. He'd say, good night, I'm glad you're here, unless he was angry. And I'd say, good night, dad, I love you. And he'd say, good night. So I knew he heard me, but he no longer loved me and he was no longer glad I was there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think it can be something so subtle that's like a knife to your heart. And then, like you guys said, we've learned that so we can carry that. Right. Like now I'm walking around silent or pouting or whatever to try like treatment to influence his behavior. Yeah. Silent treatment can be an attack. Oh, it is. If you're, if you're withholding approval and love, when someone's specifically asking for it and you're using that silence to communicate disapproval, right. uh, which you know that you wouldn't do it if they if they wouldn't pick up on it. And then yeah. they pick up on it and then you can see that they get uh, uh, insecure or whatever or afraid um, that they're losing that they're losing your love. And then the attacker gets a power hit off of the fact that they're sending that person into victimhood in that moment. Right. Or the person then does the thing they want, you know, like, so whatever it was, I didn't do that day that my father wanted me to do. You bet I yep. did it the next day or that night before I went to bed right. or, yeah. and I Get think the stuff that see the subtle things as being an attack, but they can be. Oh yeah. John and Amy, did you have something? I yeah. Just so one of the thing. things I learned going through some of this and I realized is being from back East from immigrant parents from Italy, one thing you hear from people back East is sarcasm. sarcasm. Yeah. Oh, I'm from back East. I got a lot of sarcasm. And going through this process, how sarcasm comes across as so much as attacking, because people are like, why? I'm like, I'm just being sarcastic or someone he's being sarcastic, but that's attacking them. And I think when I break it down even more myself, that's what sarcasm is. It's a weaker version of attacking. It's kind of, I'm attacking you, but I'm just kidding, you know. Under the guise of yeah, connecting. Of, yeah. yeah of, so it's not attacking, it's sarcasm. There's a difference. There is no difference. It's the same thing. You're making comments under your breath or saying things that are only being said for one reason, and that's to attack the person. That's but do it in a playful legit, way. We call that. Kidding yeah. on the legit. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that's so, what I got out of it. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's great. Some sarcasm can be done without attack, but I think a lot of times it is passive aggressive and, and, and therefore attack. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I you know, I, I will say sometimes really, it, yeah. it really, like, well, after this, you know, when you get your, your, what you say really cleaned up because anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. I've been watching a lot of Matlock lately. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anything you say, can yeah. can affect your emptiness or fullness. And when I first started doing it, I was like, I, I was a little bit on edge at, at certain times because I was like, oh, whoa, I was just being a real sarcastic person, right? You know, I was being very cynical. I was being very edgy and uh, not, you know, that's the other thing, like that whole, you know, like, you know, oh, she's so edgy or he's so edgy or something. And it's like, are they okay? <laughs> like, like, are they empty? Is there something going on with them? Like, you yeah. know, I just, I always, I always think about that. But I, because when I get edgy, I can only go from my own perspective. When I get edgy, it's because I'm empty, you know, because there's something that's going on, something's off in me. And, uh, but, but I love that you brought that up, John, that sarcastic piece. It's, it's empty. I can't even be around it. It's emptiness. It's feeding. Yeah. It, it is. It's yeah. imitation love. Yeah. 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 They're trying to get something because they feel empty. Otherwise, if you feel love, think of when, when, when have you been sarcastic in a passive aggressive manner when you have, when your heart has been full? Never, <laughs> never. No, I will say that I've said, fuck you to p- people <laughs> like good friends. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, fuck you. You say fuck you to me in the right I context. Do. And I, I, really feel love. Do. I know. And it's, it's like one of those, it's a term of endearment, you in know, the right context. in the right context, but it's, it's, 
it's kind of like if it's the only go-to, that's the conversation you have all the time. It's like, what is, what's really going on? Yeah. Yeah. You, I love the subtlety. All you guys know that you have your own semantic language as a couple that only you understand and you know, it doesn't really matter what's being said. It matters how it's being said or when it's being said and and that kind of thing to, to really be, because you're so already, because you've been together for so long, you're so tuned into the subtleties of each other's behaviors right. essentially that that you can pick up on a lot a lot of stuff maybe everything you know and and we're, and we're cleaning that up even more so we can make each other uh f- more loved and feel more loved and such yeah it's it's a very interesting dynamic because once you clean up your energy on any of those passive aggressive things that you might say, or just you, just if it's us against the us, partner right? will notice. The, the partner will notice. He took a 90 day criticism fast. And um, I, all I noticed was that I loved him more and I wanted to be with him more. This and was, I did this, this is a long time ago. Many years ago. And, um, and I was like, God, you are really handsome. You know, oh. like what's going on with you? Like what? are you working out? Like what's happening with you? And it was because he wasn't criticizing me. And I was, I didn't know because I came from a critical world. And so which, I, which enabled so me like, to continue the criticism also. Right. It, Cause like, she's not it even went, noticing. It, it, went, it went rampant. It unconsciously went rampant. Until the point where one day he goes, he said something. He goes, I'm sorry, that was a criticism. That was, that was my fault. And I go, I didn't even notice it was a criticism and then my brain went how often do I not notice that you know people are putting little chinks in me you know and my armor you know and and kind of picking at me and I don't even realize it and uh ignorance is bliss sometimes with that because now I notice everything you know, That's and I'm like, where you feel that parent tape. Yeah. But now that I know it, I st- uh, like at this point, I'm like, I don't care. You know, well, it, doesn't like, affect you. <laughs> it doesn't affect me the same yeah, way because I healed that piece of it. For and the it most can part. be that criticism can be really subtle. Like I'll catch myself doing it to Matthew. Like I'll be like, oh, I'm surprised you did it that way, which is the same as saying, why the fuck did you do it that way? <laughs> <laughs> that was dumb. Right. And then I'll be like, holy shit. And then to How you, dare you. Me, Right to your point, Kira, about not noticing when I apologize, he's like, didn't even dawn on me. Right. Like it it is. We just we can get habituated to some of the subtleties, like John said about that mumbling under your breath. In the other one of Greg's other books, he talks about how rolling your eyes or heavy sighs is the same as saying you're a freaking idiot. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's an attack. It's a uh, or it's a a subtlety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Uh, sorry no you did you're perfect um yeah yeah, you know all I know is that we could we could definitely talk about anger uh and attack rather for hours oh I remember because it's so nuanced you know unsolicited advice that is the one that catches me up that that's one thing that I do I'll give unsolicited advice um and I got to reel myself in. And then there's, there's time where I'm like, people are trying to give me unsolicited advice. And I'm like, no, no, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to end well. <laughs> yeah. Like in, like in public, but, but again, it, 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 it can, it can come down to the intention too. And maybe it's, maybe that's hard to kind of discern, but some people may rush to help if you're really needing help and, and ask, you know, do you need help? And then there's other people who may come up to you when you need help and saying, you know, the really the auto the way you ought to do that is, xyz <laughs> and that if you would just if yeah you would yeah that's you a good would just one. let you me tell just, you what you should have done if you would only yeah that's very much my mother says language. says still to this day says that uh, let me tell you let me tell you what you should have done yeah. and i'm like i can't do anything now right. i already did it i right. did it i just submitted my application <laughs> I hit oh, well. send on that hateful email that's right i already said send yeah i already hit send <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know we're over time. I want to respect yeah. people's time, but I want to say one quick thing. And that is uh, with the conditioning, you know, when something is triggered, that is a lifelong thing, like feeling criticized or blamed, then I could, I could not even be criticizing whatsoever. And she might feel blamed or criticized, yep. you know, and that used to happen a 
lot. Oh my more. God. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's, it's extremely rare anymore. And it's a quick hiccup to fix now after having done so much work on it. It's, it's a question. So for us, it's a lot of clarifying questions. Clarifying hey, questions. Hey, did you mean this when you said that? Did you mean yeah. that that way? Because my brain is saying that's what it means. I'm an right. idiot and I don't know what I'm doing with myself. Because I already think that sometimes. So why wouldn't you also see that in me? <laughs> right. It's it's good to speak to the trigger. It's good to speak to trigger instead of reacting to the trigger and then projecting it back out. To right. the partner. And then you get into battlefield territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is good. Very good. good. Does anybody that have any worth the price of admission? All right. <laughs> questions. Please save your ticket stubs. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. I think we're, I, I think since we didn't get anybody kind of coming in for the membership thing, and I think there's several reasons for that. One thing I think is uh, because if you have friends, you may not want them to be in on this. <laughs> you might want to keep it safe to yourself. Um, and then I know we have several clients, you know, or not clients, but coaches that are in here. And, you know, the people that some of us coaches know are our clients. And, you know, so that could be a reason, but there could be multiple reasons. Either way, I don't know. So what we might do is we might do a different kind of fun giveaway thing. And I'll figure that out this week sometime. And it'll be for um, the uh, 365 days of love, your journey to lasting intimacy and joy. And it's a, a fun little activity book. It's an activity pack. Um, does anybody, oh, oh. Yeah, you know, I was going to do that. So um, we are also we also do see couples as clients, <laughs> and we do help people uh, in their coupleship to um, be elevated, improved, help them to loving communication, love communication. eliminate behaviors. Yeah, all that. Right. Put it put it into customized action in their lives. What we're teaching. Yes, and then helping with anything that might come up. Um, you know, as they go through the process of, of healing different parts of their relationship. And so we uh, will do a free intake uh, for those of you who might want to join us. And um, I would recommend Pat and Kira for any mm -hmm. coaching and having them with them as they've evolved into this fantastic best friend inspiring couple. I want the inside seat. So if you're on the fence, there's my vote about it. Thank I you. Agree. I agree. It's all of that. <laughs> how do you how do you feel about us, Amy and John? <laughs> I love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Well, do we want to just check out here and then uh, we'll go from there and we'll be a little bit cleaner and clearer on our pitch for relationship coaching at some future point. <laughs> I will fix you. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Thank you, welcome. everybody. Yeah. My checkout is I can't wait to start with acting like a victim in the behavior category next week. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Evelyn. Thank you for joining, Evelyn. All right. And everyone. And everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Guys. Bye. Thank you.